is so cool. Miles Morales' PS5 debut is a conflicting experience. It's great, looks incredible and packs in a good story, but it is brief to the point where placing it front and centre of the PS5 launch lineup feels a little dishonest. You'll likely see the credits roll before other launch games are finished downloading. There's nothing wrong with that obviously, I am all for short games, but just be prepared to see the main campaign through in an evening or two. It is good though, let's make that clear, and a great demonstration of what the PS5 can do. Even before the action starts, the intro, with Miles on a subway, introduces the DualSense haptics with a holy shit that actually feels like a train moment. The load times, or lack of, are also amazing. Whether you fast travel across the map or leave an interior to go outside, it's instantaneous, with the only noticeable delay being the second or two it takes to start from the PS5 menu. It also looks incredible, recreating a snowy New York at near photorealistic levels. There are moments later in the game when gentle flurries set in and the distant buildings fade into the weather, and the only thing that gives it away as a game is a little guy swinging past in a onesie. That little guy Miles is a great character too, naive but keen, desperate to live up to his title but plagued with self-doubt and questions. He's still learning the ropes, feeling his way both as a young adult and a new superhero. Throughout the focus is on the human part of superhuman. The opening places a firm emphasis on community and family, making his responsibilities and relationships and hopes outside of Spider-Man clear. Like the last game, there's a city to protect, crimes to fight and just an exhilarating freedom to being let loose with those powers. Diving from a skyscraper to swing at the last possible minute as the street sounds rush up to meet you never gets old. Even here, Miles' character comes through with lovely animations as he occasionally flails through the air or overbalances as he lands, showing that he's still new to everything. Combat is the only mechanic that's really overhauled, with a new Venom power letting you unleash splashy area of effect ground pounds or distance covering crackling dashes that launch enemies into the air. There's a rhythm that builds around charging and unleashing this ability to maximum effect. It's also tactical, with opponents using equipment that can only be disabled or destroyed by Venom attacks. The new ability to turn invisible is fun, but also feels underexplored in a game with an already heavy stealth emphasis. You spend much of your time unseen as it is, hopping between high spots searching out takedowns, so the idea of stealth camo never really feels meaningfully utilised as a mechanic. As satisfying as the combat is, it does underline how short the game is. The skill tree is light and lacks any real game-changing upgrades, while there are only four gadgets. They're all fun, but never capture the magic of things like the last game's trip mines or web bombs. The brevity of the story also means it sometimes feels like you're unlocking things faster than your ability to master the combinations and options, even if you chase all the street crimes and side challenges. There aren't really any side mission threads either. There's one main storyline, a few enemy bases to clear out, things to collect, repeating street crimes, plus structured one-off events. These are things like knocking ice off a crane to stop it falling over or finding a stolen car. There are a few side missions, but they're mostly single hits unlocked by story progress. Not because they're related to what's happening, but more to space them out and make them last until the end. The story does at least make what time it has count, and it's impressive just how much it packs a full-size game feel into barely double-digit runtimes. There are good set pieces and even better narrative moments. When the game wants you to feel something, it hits all the right buttons, and I was genuinely affected by the ending on more than one level. Overall, it's been a weird one to review. I really enjoyed it, but the brevity feels like something to warn you about given that this is presented as a launch title. Even if you're expecting a small full game, this is smaller. It plays like great DLC because it is great, but it's also clearly DLC. The story, characters and action are all enjoyable, but if you unboxed your shiny new PS5 on Friday night and settled in to play this over the weekend, you'd likely reach the hoovering up collectibles because that's all that's left stage before Monday came around. We give it four stars.